Let's quickly look at another conversation this morning as we inch closer to 2023. The allocation of one billion naira, a constitutional amendment that might just be in jeopardy. Well, the National Assembly had in March passed 44 bills to amend key provisions of the 1999 Constitution and transmit it same to 36 state for endorsement or otherwise. As part of the constitutional amendment process, the process requires the amendment of not less than two-thirds of 36 houses of assembly for any of the bills to sail through. However, only 21 states acted on the bill as of December the 6th. According to the Conference of State Assembly's speakers, while well, at a distinguished parliamentary lecture organized by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Bajabi Amila, said it was doubtful if the constitutional review exercise would be concluded before the ninth National Assembly winded up in June 2023. Uh, let's have Justice Huwebu this morning uh, join us and share his thoughts on this. Justice Huwebu, thank you so much for being part of the show. It's a good thing that you are a legal practitioner. Merry Christmas once again. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so w what do you make of this now? I mean, look at that. One billion naira and the fact that we're still grappling with uh, uh, the constitutional amendment process and effort? Well, actually, constitutional amendment is not, uh, it's not ordinarily supposed to be a test play. It's something that has to go through bureaucracy, that, that, that bureaucracy in it. And every bureaucratic process is also supposed to be complied with. But aside from that, that is not even my problem. My problem is that um, all this while, uh, Nigerians are not, you know, being carried along to whatever the National Assembly seems they are doing or they want to do. And that is why people like Ongo have always said that the problem we have in Nigeria is that um, our, our, well, our so-called political leaders wake up one day to decide what to do without public opinion. Uh, we have members on uh, the National Assembly, senators and House of Rest members. So the question you should ask is everything. How many of these members will actually go back to them, consult their constituencies, and, you know, table issues to them before the liberation? And you, you know, well, now I know that in this country is a no, no, no for that. Period. So Nigerians only wake up one day and hear that there's a bill that is being that is ongoing and all the best. So that is even where my major focus is. Because when you talk about um, whether it's going to have a job party or country, well, they, 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 every bill all over the world has process to go before it would even come to landline. Now, but uh, there are some concerns that have been, you know, put out. The reason why the process has been stalled because of some sudden clause. Uh, for instance, the issue of... Uh, uh, state policing, we'll talk about local government autonomy, amongst other issues that have been stated, why uh, it should be included in the process before it can get a yes from the, you know, state assemblies. No, you see, that is what I'm trying to say. Even in the state assemblies also, I, I'm still saying the same thing. For example, as I speak to you now, many Nigerians don't even know what is happening at the now, the state assemblies also have it as a duty on their own to even educate their own people in various ways, get their opinion. You talk about uh, state policy, you talk about uh, autonomy of the local government. In fact, the autonomy of the local government itself, for me, is either, it's neither here nor there. Because for me, the local governments have been issued all this while, or always uh, uh, have autonomy. Only that these um, present governors we have came into power uh, with the kangaroo uh, establishment of governor's forum and hijacked the local government. That is why we're experiencing all these things. So for me, there are so many other things. But my problem there, like I keep on saying, many Nigerians don't even know what they are doing there in Africa. And you say you're representing Nigerians. The state assembly members, the same thing. They don't know what is happening. If I let me tell you the truth, I also try to give kudos to the 
um, what do you call the, the social media and the journalists in our in, in Nigeria today for doing a good job. Because most of these things that we discuss nowadays, people many people get to hear about is only on social media and through the you know you know through journalists and all the rest. But, but shouldn't we be worried about, you know, the fact that we're going to um, spend one billion naira? It's just going to be a waste. And then we would have the next assembly, maybe the tenth assembly, uh, and then we'll start the process again. So we're continuing the cycle of, you know, yes, I don't know what the target why. is. Uh, <laughs> that, that, waste. It's, it's, uh, well, that is why. Okay, that, that what I'm trying to say. That is why they will always want to do it within themselves without carrying the people along. Because they know that many Nigerians will oppose to some of these uh, policies they are bringing, some of this uh, expenditure, some of this waste, and all the rest. Today, we are talking about hardship in the country. The economy is so bad. You know how much the dollar is today, as I speak to you in Nigeria. We're not talking about pounds, we're not talking about euro. And you're talking about spending billions. Now, the question is, this money you're spending, how will it affect the lives of ordinary Nigerians? That is just the thing. They don't care. They don't want to know. And they see it as a waste. They are not seeing it as a waste. They are seeing it as something that will benefit them. So they don't care. And not only them, even the various states of assemblies. That's a major problem and a major challenge. So, but if you have the state assemblies giving uh, conditions for, you know, conditions to act on the bills, why have these conditions not been considered? Especially when you look at these conditions um, and look at the interest of the people, it doesn't look like it's alien. It doesn't look like it's anti-people condition. Why have, you know, the relevant quarters not acted and given a yes to these conditions? Well, the truth is this, maybe um, you, many Nigerians don't know what it is. And for, for, for some of us, no, as far as I'm concerned, they are just playing politics with the whole thing. At the end of the day, they will come to an agreement and have their own. In fact, as I speak to you, running government in Nigeria now is seen as a national thing. Both these various things as of assemblies, when they try to, to drag something, they are looking for something. That's exactly what is happening not so sure than that. It's not as if that they have the interest of the masses. No. It's a capital no. Okay. But just as we inch closer to 2023 elections, and of course, looking at our democracy as a country, do you think that this singular act, stalling of the constitutional amendment process for, you know, the fifth time would have any negative implication for the for our democracy and also for the elections? Well, the truth is this. Uh, if, it, you see, I keep on saying that uh, the major problem we have now, as of today, especially uh, in this dispensation, is what I call lack of sincerity of purpose. Because if there is sincerity of purpose, some of these things will not be happening. For example, there is uh, a constitution amendment, one way or the other. And uh, some of the amendments, yes, are okay. It's going to somehow, you know, benefit the masses. Because when you talk about making laws, uh, you're talking about laws that will be proactive, laws that will enhance the promotion and the, you know, you know the progress of the country, the, the totality of the policies will, that will affect the people positively. That is the essence of making laws. And just like uh, uh, one of our legal jurists, uh, Professor Rousseau, he said that the law is to harmonize with the society. The implication of that is this. As the society grows, the law is supposed to grow alongside with the society. So, but when you see some of these things happening, you begin to get one interest or the other. For example, this issue of independent candidates that has been, is part of the amendment. I do not see reason why this 2023 election the independent candidate thing wouldn't have been implemented. But that is the issue I was telling you about selfishness and people that do not have the interest of the mass. They know that if you try to bring it up to the limelight, many of the political parties 
will be their powers will be watered down. The impunity that is uh, that 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 has become a norm in our political parties today will go to an extent. So that is why you see some of these things happen. It's a thing of interest because most of the amendments today that you're seeing will also work against the majority of the so-called political leaders. And that is why you see some of these uh, problems building up and all the rest. And I bet you that at the end of the day, like we are seeing, this, this amendment might not see the, 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 might not see the lamp light until the next National Assembly comes in force. And it may also drag for a long time. So how are we even sure that even the next Assembly that will come will even take it up? So, in other words, uh, it's not very visible that, you know, the Ninth Assembly will meet up. Of course, uh, we're still looking at, you know, some time before 2023 is, you know, over. June, precisely, 2023. You see, when be, of course, you know uh, the bureaucratic process in um, bringing up bills, um, going to the first reading, second reading, and, and uh, all the way before it goes to committee stage and blah 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 and uh, if actually they are serious with or without the uh the, the president uh, you know giving his assent the national assembly knows what to do the third majority can go ahead and pass the bill but has it ever happened in this country before and the answer is no and why because like what fella used to say party party government there's always a party between the between the executive and the and the legislatures in the country. And that's why you see some of these things happening. We have pushed and moved totally and entirely away from the doctrine of separation of power propounded by Montesquieu. And that is why Nigeria is being affected today. That is why nothing is working in this country. Justice Uhuegbu, uh, we have to go, but I'm sure that you probably have, you know, a word for the National Assemblies across the federation of the country. Well, the truth is, it's not an indictment, but to me, I don't even trust, I don't even have confidence in this National Assembly, this current, this present one. I don't. So what word will I, am I going to tell them? All this why the Nigerians have been talking, have they done anything? So they see it as their, as their father's property. They see it as something they can pocket because they have already pocketed Nigerians with the executive. So what, what do you expect? What do you expect? So what, what would I tell them now for them to listen? We have been talking. Nigerians have been talking, shouting. Have they listened? That is what? Impunity to the highest order. So we'll see how it goes. Well, uh, thank you so much. But one would be wondering that, you know, at this point in time, if you have the state houses, state houses of assembly not uh, acting in accordance, despite the fact that they have given, you know, um, several conditions, which some people on some quarters have said, you know, it's something to consider. It's rational. We should think towards all of this line. But if you talk about impunity, does the system itself not have a mechanism, you know, to correct all of this impunity? Uh, what happens to yes, the executive it, 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 of government? Uh, is there yeah, any interference? It, it, is there anything the judiciary can do? What exactly can the various arms of government do in order to court and curtail all of this impunity? Yes, it's supposed to have. Just for example, let me give you an example. The EFCC is there. The ICPC is there, the Code of Conduct and all the rest. But the truth is this. For example, let me take EFCC as an example. Do they have the, 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 the will, the will to do the need by prosecuting high-profile politicians in this country with or without favor? That is the problem we're having. Some of these institutions you see, they are just, you know, on the surface. So we know what is happening. If not, and that is why I said, if you remember, the major problem we have in Nigeria is that, is that we have not institutionalized the system. I don't need to be the EFCC chairman for me to do the needful. Right. If the system is working, whoever is the EFCC chairman will do the needful. In fact, it's not the EFCC chairman that is working. It's the system that will work. And that's why they are killing the system. Justice Uwebo, thank you so much for your time always. Uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year.
Thank you very much. And you people too over the end. All right then. And that's the size of our conversation this morning on the, the Breakfast. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we will definitely return tomorrow with more interesting headlines. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it will be fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Boko, and thanks for joining us. We join the newsroom at uh, 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us. <laughs>